Leon was both a judge, a great judge, and a great, great lawyer, but he was also a scholar. He, he wrote books, he taught at the University of Pennsylvania, and so here's another backstory for you. You know, in 1974 in Philadelphia, there was a meeting, the 59th annual meeting of the Association for the Study of African American Life and History. We call it ASALA, and I am the immediate past president of that national organization that was founded by Carter G. Woodson in 1915. And so Leon is a speaker. He's introduced by another great lawyer, Raymond Pace Alexander, who was also judge then. And so he gives a speech in 1974 using his research about the role of law in the rise of slavery in the colonies, and that research will later become his great book in the matter of color. And he gives a speech. At the same time, however, in that same year, he's also uh, the judge over a case where there is a union that's discriminating. And so the lawyers for the union made the argument that Leon needed to recuse himself because he could not be partial. And the reason he couldn't be partial was because he gave that historical speech about slavery. Well, Leon refused to recuse himself. And in refusing to recuse himself, and I quote him again, in a nation which had a revolution, theoretically, based on the declaration that we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, a judge should not disqualify if two centuries later he believes that the rhetoric must be made real for all citizens, including blacks. So of course I do have feelings that this nation must fulfill its theoretical commitment to equal justice under law. I do not apologize for these feelings, nor do I apologize for my remarks. Given the same opportunity, I would make those remarks again today, and if I had not in fact made them, I would wish that I had. Now, he made that statement. It, it was used in law school case books, the, judge, the judge's recusal. And, and the other thing I just want to say very quickly, and some of you, I know you remember his famous open letter to Clarence Thomas. And that appeared in the Penn uh, Law, Law Review in 1992. It appeared in the um, Philadelphia newspaper. But before, before that, that famous letter uh, most of you saw. He again gave a speech, this time at the 76th annual meeting of the Association for the Study of African American Life and History. This was the fall of 1991. And this was the first version. He titled it, I quote, A Historian's Suggestions to Clarence Thomas. And it was a history lesson. I'm not sure how much Clarence Thomas learned. Now, the final thing I want to say, and then I will sit down, because I am looking forward to hearing uh, from the panel and, and from my friend Ken Frazier. But the final thing is that in 1964, and this is a crucial year, because this is the year when, and, and there's a great uh, image in the mural of President Johnson you know, giving the commission, you are now a federal judge. He was on the district court. So in that year, 1964, he gives a speech, and this is the first time he uses, and he, he, he quotes from this poem um, by Langston Hughes, Dream of Freedom. And, and this is, uh, you know, almost every speech Leon made, he would end with the words of Langston Hughes, Dream of Freedom. And so he, uh, this year though, this was in June of 1964, and I also want to mention to you that Langston Hughes wrote the poem in 1964 because the poem was written as a commemoration for the 10th anniversary of Brown v. Board. But in June 1964, when Leon gives the speech, he titles it Dream of Freedom, and he's giving it at the commencement of the uh, Antioch College, where he went to uh, school, and he, he's getting an, an honorary degree. But he, 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 he gives, you know, the, the closing from Dream of Freedom. And so I, I just want to say that if Leon were with us today, he would remind us that the dream of freedom, because, you know, the first line goes like this. There's a dream 
in the land with its back against the wall. And he'd always said that so powerfully. And if Leon was here today, he would close with that. Because in 2022, and right now especially, there is a dream in the land with its back against the wall. And he would quote from those final verses, the dream knows no frontier or tongue, the dream no class or race, the dream cannot be kept secure in any one locked place. The dream this day embattled with its back against the wall to save the dream for some, it must be saved for all. Thank you. <laughs>